Friday feels here as the Padres look to ignite a spark after another big comeback in the National League Championship Series. Thanks for being here at 6 a.m. I'm Eric Connor. And I'm Nadia Rampour. And of course, today's game three, the series is tied mm -hmm. one game apiece. I mean, we came off of a really good win, so hopefully all that energy is there. Of course, they're playing in Philly now. CBS 8's Chris Grow live downtown. Uh, you got that mural of Musgrove behind you. Yeah. We know he's going to be pitching. So what can we expect in Philly? Let's go, Joe. Yeah, watch out for that ear. What, <laughs> yeah. Is there anything hidden uh, there? Yeah, well, you know what these East Coast... Yeah, exactly. I was just going to say his ears not shiny on the mural. Uh, and you know what these East Coast teams like to do is when Joe is dominating, they like to maybe, you know, hey, call in the ump. Let's go check the ears. And I wouldn't put it past the Phillies to try something uh, just like the Mets did. So who knows? We'll see. But either way, Joe's got nothing on those ears. He likes to eat his Cheetos in the, the you know, the dugout. He doesn't need to go ahead and put the hot stuff on his ears or whatever they were trying to come up, up with any type of excuses. But for 37 p.m. Game three Padres versus Phillies. This is a Friar Friday, not a Phillies Friday. We don't have a PH sound uh, there in front of our Friday. It is F for the Friars Padres. Let's go. We're going to be having uh, Ranger Suarez on the mound for the Phillies. Pretty good pitcher, pretty good young pitcher for them. Uh, but Joe Musgrove, again, an established MLB star. Uh, obviously, we know his resume by now. We are counting on him to get the job done in game three because I've got to think that the mindset here for manager Bob Melvin is get your best pitcher, your most comfortable pitcher there on the road and at home to get this very key victory because if they win game three here, that guarantees that the series will be coming back to San Diego for either game six and game seven or just game six. So again, it's not to get ahead of ourselves, but it does put that math in the favor there of the Padres. And speaking of the math, the Padres are favored in this one according to the latest odds that were just put out uh, by the sports books. So again, the betters, the Sharks, they're looking at the Padres. They know Joe Musgrove is on the mound and they know nothing is up behind his ears. You know, being able to realize that and keep, you know, that in perspective that, you know, you just got to make it to that first pitch and, you know, stay calm. Um, that's the most difficult part. But once I'm out there, man, I feel like I'm at home. There you go. He feels like he's at home. Now, as for those who are still home, Petco Park, we are going to be seeing some viewing parties out here Friday, Saturday, and now Sunday. They've added that one as well, too. Now, gates are going to open up at 2.30 p.m. What we've heard so far is that actually the Saturday has sold out. Now, they don't cost anything. You do have to go online, though, and reserve a spot. So uh, they've reached capacity there for Saturday, so to speak. Well, what's going to be happening at these watch parties is they're going to have concessions open. The game, of course, is going to be up on the Jumbotron. And we also know that there are going to be quite a different watch, uh, quite a number of different watch parties like Alesmith going to be doing something today. They're opening up at 11. They're going to have drink specials that start at 4, so a good half hour there before the game so everyone can get their liquid courage in. That Alesmith uh, 394 Pale Ale, maybe even the State Ale, uh, those have been on sale in the past, and they've had a number of different food trucks. A great atmosphere. Netta, you and I watched game one of the Wild Card Series. Yeah. Yep. It is a fun atmosphere. Mm -hmm. When the team is away, you kind of feel like, man, I want to be around Padres. Right. Yeah, that's right. More so. Oh, and they fill it up there, and to do that. people were cheering there as loud as they do at Petco. Yeah. So, yeah, it's fun to be around <laughs> all the other yeah. fans. But, yeah, but Chris, thank you very much for that. Lots of great spots around mm -hmm. the county going to be open up having these uh, watch parties here. So the Padres, yeah, they just need to win one game in Philly to bring the series back here to San Diego. Game three and four will be afternoon games in Philly. Game five on Sunday will start a little before noon hour time. Now, if the series does come back to San Diego, Game six is Monday at five. Game seven is Tuesday at five. And CBS 8 is now in the East Coast with the Padres. Our Jake Gariani and photojournalist Jordan Ray are in Philly right now. They're covering the games in Philly all weekend, so stay tuned to CBS 8. Where it's 43 degrees right Ooh, now for them. Yeah, chilly. a little chilly. Uh, turning now to a health alert. It might be time to stock that medicine cabinet. County health officials are asking people to get a flu shot as cases are rising. We've been telling you about a lot of students out at local schools, and there are other concerns here, including a respiratory illness already impacting kids. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol is live in Shula Vista now to explain more on this. Good morning. Good morning, Eric and Etta. That's right. I mean, a week ago we were standing at Patrick Henry High School reporting on over a thousand students out sick. 
Now he contacted Ready Children's Hospital to get more information. They are saying that the flu season is starting early. The immunity of these students aren't as high because of the two years of the pandemic. They also say if you don't take the proper precautions like a flu shot, this year could be rough. The vast majority of children who get this um, will not need hospitalization, will not get that sick. That is a bit of good news from Dr. Sanjay Gupta, who says it can be especially hard on children under a year old. But for adults, the flu is even a bigger concern. No hospitals in at least 33 states are seeing a dramatic rise in a case of an illness called RSV. Cases have more than doubled in 25 states over the last month, and it's putting a strain on hospitals here in San Diego. That's the strain that took out um, those students at Patrick Henry. So the San Diego County has already seen several large suspected respiratory outbreaks in October at our local schools. So here's how to know where the virus is spreading near you. Well, the County of San Diego Health and Human Service Agency is introducing a brand new combined respiratory virus surveillance report. This will provide San Diegans with a detailed snapshot of common respiratory illness activity in the region on a weekly basis. Now, of course, we still still have COVID-19 to deal with. Some health experts say derivatives of Omicron could cause COVID-19 infections to surge this winter. Now, symptoms for both viruses include fever, headache, muscle and joint pain, as well as sore throat and coughing. Now, if you are thinking about getting the flu shot, now is the time. Experts say get it ideally by the end of October because it does take two weeks to get those antibodies built up in your body to protect yourself. That's why I'm standing outside of a CVS in Chula Vista. This is one of many locations all over San Diego County where you can easily get that shot. For a full list of locations, you can find it on CVSA.com. I'm Dana Marie McNichol coming to you live from Chula Vista. Dana Marie with important health information. Thank you for that. Now this morning, a homicide investigation is underway in Spring Valley. It happened about 11 a.m. This was yesterday on Hamishaw Boulevard near the Spring Valley swap meet. The Sheriff's Department says a 61 year old man died after a fight. Deputies detained a 31 year old man. Anyone with information is asked to call the Sheriff's Department. This morning we are hearing from the brother of the 16 year old boy killed in Oceanside. Police say Justin Ferguson was stabbed Tuesday night at Martin Luther King Park. Police arrested a teenage boy the next day. The victim's older brother was relieved to hear about the arrest. I mean, it's justice, but my peace comes from knowing that he's okay. And now he's, he's at full peace with himself. Justin was a student at Surfside Educational Academy in Oceanside. The school is offering counseling to students and staff. The head custodian of a South Bay Elementary School is under arrest accused of placing a hidden camera in the women's bathroom for nearly a decade. This was reported at Bayside Steam Academy in Imperial Beach. The charges against 39 year old Freddie Mogollon include child pornography and invasion of privacy that allegedly date back to 2014. Alleged victims are trying to sue him and the district saying they did not do enough to prevent harassment and protect privacy. The superintendent tells us they take employee safety and security very seriously. Oh, nearly 10 years mm. there. Well, a heads up to drivers this morning. Caltrans closing the northbound I-5 off ramp. This is to La Jolla Parkway, so that's a very busy area. Popular traveled road. It's happening from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. So a heads up here. You'll have to go around. Crews will be doing bridge work. This is one of the main ways to get to La Jolla. You can take Torrey Pines Road instead or go through PB and Bird Rock to get that way. A lot of people going to be out and about this weekend here, going to the different Padres events around town, or just maybe headed to the beach. How's it going? Oh, yeah, it's going to be a nice one. I mean, we're going to be under much more fall-like conditions. Keep in mind that the Santa Ana winds that we saw for Tuesday, Wednesday, and a little bit of yesterday, uh, not all that much considering those clouds came by by the afternoon. Well, those conditions are leaving us. We're instead shifting to onshore flow. That's going to create a surge of coastal clouds and even inland cloud Cover. Temperatures this afternoon in the 70s, 74 for the coastline, 79 inland across the mountaintops will be at 72 and 94 out there for the deserts. Uh, we on satellite radar imagery haven't seen much uh, beyond this morning and late last night. That was when everything started to pick back up. That ridge of high pressure and those Santa Ana's kept those clouds way offshore. But now as onshore flow strengthens, those clouds are back in the forecast and in a very scattered format. It's going to be like this all weekend long. Don't expect 
expect the coastline to be the only spot affected by those clouds. We countywide are expecting some to many clouds. Uh, that means partly to mostly cloudy skies as we head into the next couple days between now and your Sunday. What we're also watching out for is Saturday night into Sunday, that next low pressure system making its way south, and that means wind and some possible rain in the forecast. High wind watch is going to be in effect from 11 a.m. tomorrow through 8 a.m. This could be upgraded to a wind advisory. It probably will be depending on how intense those wind gusts are going to be getting. That is going to be in effect from 4 p.m. on Saturday through about midnight on Sunday. So that is for our San Diego County deserts and it extends all the way through Imperial County. As far as traffic goes this morning, things are light on the roads. It's a Friday morning, so I think a lot of people are hitting the snooze button. Head to CBS 8.com slash traffic for the latest.